welcome everyone to another episode of the Footy Game Day Squad Show. I'm your host, Cal, and joining me today for the Round 10 AFL Review Show is Tom. Tom, how are you doing this afternoon? Mate, I'm excellent. You can see the sweater on me right now. Boston just got the win, 2-2, feeling a lot better than a couple of days ago. And yeah, I'm keen to get stuck into some footy because there's some great performances over the weekend. Yeah, some big ones. But That's mate, sure. I heard there might have been a bit of foul play between you and Kerm. And as I can see here, there's only two of us. Can you explain what is going on there? Yes. So this week I told Kerm his services weren't needed for this show because he is a Man City fan and I'm a Liverpool fan and I'm not quite ready to acknowledge what happened <laughs> on the weekend. <laughs> There's been a few tears, um, I'll admit, but yeah, I thought it was best for the show's dynamics to keep them away for one more show, just so I had a bit of extra time to process it. You sure it's only going to be one, mate? In the state you're in right now, it could be, <laughs> it could be extended. There's a good 50-50 chance you don't see him in the preview show tomorrow night. So yeah, stay tuned <laughs> for that one. Speaking of preview shows, last week, we apologize. We had some technical difficulties. We uploaded the pod, got it all out there, took forever for some reason, and then we didn't have any audio. So we didn't end up posting it, obviously, because it would have been useless for YouTube. But I thought I'd give you a quick recap of what happened because there was a couple of big things, starting with pack of the week. Kia Boy 1888 got a pack with Sean Darcy Gold, Silver Mills, and a Silver Tom McDonald. Massive pack. Delicious. He's our, player. He's our winner of the week, and we've got three player, three times three player common packs coming his way. Question of the week. There are a couple of good ones. I know you asked more from Tuke Miller. I asked more from Andrew McGrath. And Kerm was really keen to see what happened with the GDS guys, uh, with the new coach. But shame, you guys will never get to know what happened. But one of the funny things was I put Sean Darcy on the hot seat. Tom put Tom, uh, sorry, Kerm put uh, Taylor Adams on the hot seat. And they both had awesome weeks. And you've put Lockie Whitfield on the hot seat. And he had an absolute dud of a week. Stinker. So, so once again, my uh, myself and Kerm's coaching tactics are a little bit better for some reason your sprays just aren't getting what they needed and the lock of the week i know you're pretty happy to talk about that but we'll leave that for our preview show what do you reckon and then we can say how, how we went for that one yeah absolutely mate yeah leave it for them all righty i reckon we get things into normal swing and we get on to right or wrong so do you want to kick things off with what you got right this week yeah mate i would love to because we haven't spoken about this player in quite a while and he's Player I love. I feel like you guys know that. It is Marcus Bontempelli. Three weeks ago, I said during one of our shows um, that you needed to hold on to him. I'm a big believer in selling high on players and not buying low. Uh, sorry, and buying low as well. Um, and just selling him at that point wasn't a great decision because he just wasn't playing his best footy for the season. But he's bounced back with a fantastic performance for the Bulldogs over the weekend. And Bont stock is already going up. Three goals Massive. and dominating the midfield in so many different aspects of the game. Um, it's better time now to sell, but honestly, I'd be waiting because with the form that he's currently in, I can see this sort of streak extending quite a while, and you might even be able to get more value out of him later. But yeah, great week for the bond, mate. I like that one. He single-handedly, I reckon, won them that game. He Ooh, yeah. just put them put on their back, put them on his back, and yeah, turned it up. And I think the dogs will go really strong from here. I think they've had their early season issues. They'll bounce back. So yeah, I like that one. Yeah, absolutely. What did you get wrong, though? Yeah. What did I get wrong, mate? I've been looking at it, and was I too early to say Collingwood weren't going to be a good team this year? Like, they are the most unpredictable team in the AFL. I feel like some weeks, you like, Collingwood got an easy win in this one, and then they end up dropping short. And then other weeks, they're going up against some of the best teams in the comp, and you're like, there's no way Collingwood can pull this one out, and then they just go and do it and stun everyone. So this is a team that I have no tabs on. I, I just don't know what to do with them. But um, they're just outside of the top eight. They're tied currently right now at ninth. Um, they're looking really good. As we mentioned, some huge wins against some big teams in the AFL. So let's see how long this can keep going. And can they sneak their way into the eight soon? I love that. I love that because that is what I got wrong as well. So I'll go straight to mine. Yeah, do I it. had. I, I said at the start of the year that Collingwood would be bottom three. And then after a few wins to the start of the year, I doubled down on that pick and I said they still probably won't win any games from here. They might win one or two for the season. They've gone and beat Frio and Frio, and we rate Frio pretty highly. Ooh, yeah. um, and as you said, Collingwood's sitting above Port now, which is making me look really, really city, uh, silly. But yeah, credit where it's due. There's some exciting things going on, and they're doing all of this without Brody Grundy. So Looking yeah, really city. Board. Look, Kerm's already in your head, mate. He hasn't got an hour. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Don't tell me that. <laughs> but let's go to the good side, mate. What did you get right this week? That's what I want to know. Well, I 
obviously I'm a little bit depressed, like I said, so I couldn't think of anything positive in my life at the moment. So <laughs> I went to our good friend of the show, uh, Doss, who you might know from his, he does his TikToks and he does his reel and he does his, what he gets right. Oh, sorry, his um, top three things from the weekend review. So if you haven't checked it out, go onto our Instagram, go onto our Facebook, go have a look at it because he does some really, really cool stuff. He does one every week. But I want to give you one from he did at the start of the season. And he said that Maribel Chol from the Gold Coast after moving up from Richmond was going to have a huge impact on this Gold Coast Suns team. And he has done exactly that. So Doss was right. He's kicked a goal in every single game this year so far. And while he's not a fantasy relevant player, he's making the Suns look really dangerous going forward. And he's bringing in those crumbing forwards in Fiorini and Rankin into the game. And yeah, we saw how good uh, Chol was a couple of weeks ago against Frio when he kicked four goals himself in the wet. So, yeah, not one that I got right, but shout out to you, Doss. You got that spot on, and, yeah, I wanted to give you a little bit of a plug where I could. What about Kerm? Kerm's not here, but just very quickly, we'll bring his on screen. So you can see there he got Sean Darcy in his right. He said that, yeah, I love what he's written there, but he said Sean Darcy was going to have a big week. He put him on the hot seat, or I put him on the hot seat, and he's bounced back. And Taylor Adams, he put him on the top seat, on the hot seat. Jeez, I cannot speak today. Apologies, guys. But he put Taylor Adams on the hot seat, and he's yep. turned out a blinder on the weekend. So that is what Kerm got right or wrong. Yeah, but Sean Darcy was always going to have a big game because I put him for lock of the round the week before, and he stunk it up. And then, of course, when all the other boys hop on, then it's time to get some results. Of course, that's always the way it is. Alrighty, Tom, we're going to move into studs and duds. Ready to get into it? Yes, mate, I am. But before I get into it, I just want to quickly add that this is the first time since round three that mine, yours, and Kerm's team have all lost in the same round, of course. So it was going to be a sad week, irrespective if Kerm was on or not. Everyone's in the L column, and uh, we're hoping we can turn that around next week. But let's get stuck Fingers into crossed, it. Yeah. yeah, Carlton versus Swans. Carlton got up in this one, 102 to 87. Uh, Swan's on a little bit of a losing streak here. Not liking what I see from there, but my star of the game was Luke Parker. He turned the clock in this one. He had an outstanding game. If you watched it, he was looking amazing. He finished with a line of 15 kicks, 11 handballs, 9 marks, 7 tackles, and a goal to top it all off, leaving him at 143 game day squad fantasy points in this one and top of the game. game. So excellent game from Luke Parker there. But let's go to the flip side, the dud of the game. It is going to Lance, a.k.a. Buddy Franklin. Um, he just had very little involvement other than kicking some goals, which really doesn't help your fantasy score as a whole. He finished the game with a line of six kicks, zero handballs, three marks, four tackles, and the two goals. Should also mention that three frees against also hurt his fantasy score in this one, leaving him at 61 game day squad fantasy points for the game. Uh, as we mentioned, just no handballs, very little kicks. You're not really going to score too well doing that. That's fair enough. And it's always rough when you've got to put your, your hero in a dud of the week. I've yeah, been there. Absolutely. It is terrible. But we'll move on. Get into game two. <laughs> I don't want to move on because game two is obviously the, the Port Geelong game that we can see there. I avoided putting one of my heroes in duds. Oh, like I said, going through it at the moment. So I had to look for some sort of positive, And that positive was Houston. He had a really, really good game when the rest of the Port team I didn't really show up, yeah. um, particularly in that second half. 144 GDS points. He has bounced back. He started the year season red hot. If you imagine, he was the top scorer in round one, disappeared for a little bit, but has now come back into it. And wait and see if potentially he's moved into the all GDS defenders slot. That'll be coming in later on in the show. But moving on to the duds, Paddy Dangerfield. This is a bit stiff because he did go off injured. He hurt his calf. No, yeah, I agree. We're not, we're not a fan, but he only had 63% time on ground. So stiff to give it to him. But we have been pretty harsh on him. Um, and if you, with a fantasy player, we don't really care if you're injured, if you go off. A score of 63, uh, 51, sorry, is a score of 51. That's not going to help your fantasy team. If you've got him in your traditional fantasy platforms, you now have to think what you want to do with him next week. It's a headache you don't want in your life, and that is why we've given him data of the week for that game. Yeah, and warranted as well, mate. Agreed. Game three. So we're not going to go into too much detail because, again, I had Kerm do up all his work and then told him he couldn't come on the on the show. But he had the bond there, like you said before. Massive game, 140 GDS points. And Manny Rao, really disappointing, 44 GDS points. 
Um, did watch it, didn't have an influence. Um, I know Kerm loves him and is disappointed uh, with his output there. So we'll quickly move on to game four. Tell us, who do you have as your stud in this one? Let me take it away, mate. Demons got up in this one against the Kangas, 100-53. to It's going to be a tough day in the office uh, when you looked at the matchup, and it definitely was a tough day in the office for the Kangas all day, trying to contain Clayton Oliver for the Demons. He was disgustingly good. Let me get into the game line. 22 kicks, 23 handballs, 5 marks, 6 tackles for 177 game day squad fantasy points. That is just dominance ridden all over it like unbelievable game and um with him Petrarca and Petrarca, Lou, eh? well mate i was about to say that pairing of him and Petrarca in the midfield is just so dangerous and uh you can tell as the season's going on they're getting red hot Dot of the game you can see the picture there no run um it's as i mentioned it was really tough day in the office for the Kangas. i was wondering what was gonna come with this one no i um, explain it i really couldn't give anyone the dud of the game i had a look i didn't feel like anyone notable had that terrible of a game there were some definite average ones in there but when you're barely getting your hands on the footy what can you do so yeah i left that one out no run play on <laughs> Yeah, right. I saw the graphic. I didn't know if it was a bad leave, if he's we're doing what, but there you go. I'm, I'm glad we've all got a bit of explanation behind that one. But uh, fair enough. Fair enough. Game five was a really, really good game to watch. And the score there that you see of the Saints beating the Crows doesn't do it justice. It was very close for a long way. And then it was only sort of late in that fourth quarter that the Saints really flexed their muscles and got on top. And my stud is a guy who flexed them more than anyone else. Oh, and yes. You're I think he's becoming almost your favorite player, but Max King. Max E. Yeah. Now, he wasn't the highest scorer, but he did get 92 points. And for a key forward, that is a very good score. Yeah. And I have to give it to him because, like I said, I did think he was the match winner. And it was stiff not to give it to Dawson. Um, but here, here's a stat for you. He had six goals from six kicks in the whole game. So That is unbelievable. Pretty- <laughs> <laughs> Pretty unreal. Pretty unreal. Love to see it. Obviously, from fantasy point of view, we'd love him to get a few more kicks. But hey, got to give him credit where he's uh, where he's due. But the dud on the other side was the other big key forward down the other end of the ground who only managed 49 GDS points, and that was Taylor Walker. He also had six kicks for the game, but he was a lot less influential than um, King, and he only kicked one of them and missed a couple of shots that I thought he potentially should have got so yeah very very different outcome even though they both had the same amount of kicks for the game yeah absolutely and even buddy franklin i mentioned before six kicks for the game and completely different output to max king there so uh yeah totally agree with that great call and game six is another one of Kerm's games here, and that yeah. was the Dreamtime game where Richmond got up. Darcy Parrish, though, massive, massive score of 165 Monster. points. Monster, yeah. I think you can just book him in for, for a big score regardless of what's happening with Essendon. But on the other side, I did say wait and see what happens with Lynch because he was playing a few pretty easy teams, in my opinion. And it was good to see him get a few goals, but I also was a little bit, didn't want to, I think I put him in the hold. I said, don't go out and buy yet. And so I think this is why. Because yep. he can stink it up big time. Um, I, I got burned a little bit at the start of the year when I said jump on um, Taylor Walker because I thought he'd come back and kick a few more goals for the Crows. But I was wrong. Um, so I learned my lesson. And this time, yeah, you can see Lynch there, 48 GDS points. If you listen to me, you would have learned from my mistake. Yeah, absolutely. Let me take it away with Game 7, hey? We have the West Coast Eagles versus the GWS Giants. The Giants getting up 138 to 86 in this one. And we have a new stud candidate. I don't think he's going to be quite on the leaderboard, and he may never get there, but it's James Peatling from the GWS Giants. Um, Love it. I called him out as GWS's high upside player during our AFL team previews during the preseason. Um, And here he's come. Big game from him. It was about time. He finished with 16 kicks, 7 handballs, 11 marks, 2 tackles, 3 goals for 143 game day squad fantasy points. Um, yeah, crack a game for Peatling throughout this one. And we'll see if he can keep this rolling throughout the season when more opportunities arise. Yeah, I like that. You'd On be happy with that side, one too? Yeah, You've been waiting to bust that one out for a while? Oh, I've been waiting. It's been in the vault, been in the bag, and it's finally come out. But on the flip side for Duds... Dud of the game is going to Isaac Cumming. Now, he's been having a fantastic season or year. This just wasn't it for him, putting up his lowest fantasy output since the season had started. He finished with a game line of 12 kicks, 8 handballs, 3 marks, a tackle for 79 game day squad fantasy points 
which to be honest, isn't bad. But for him this year and how well he's been playing, that's a pretty average or below average game, which is why I warranted that of the game. Yeah, that's fair enough. It was tough because maybe maybe if they'd won by 100 points and there was no ball down back, you'd say that's fair enough. But considering the Eagles were actually pretty competitive for parts of this game, there was actually for the footy down his end, but yeah, yeah. just couldn't find it as much as he normally does. So no, that's a fair one. Game eight. Was this the shock of the round, Hawthorne beating the Lions? He absolutely was the shock of the round. The Lions have uh, been so excellent all year. We've been giving them wraps, but get into it, mate. I can't wait to hear this one. Because, yeah, if it wasn't this game, it's definitely the next one we're going to talk about is the shock of the round. Let us know who you think below in the comments who you think the shock of the round, because I think it's flip coin flip between game eight and nine. But game eight, the Lions got beaten by the Hawks. And what you can see there is Daniel Rich regardless of his team getting beaten or not, he still had a big day. And I'm so happy about this because I put him on the hot seat three weeks ago and he's just gone bang, bang, bang. I love to see it. 141, like I said, wasn't the highest for the game, but as a defender, they're more valuable than midfield. So yeah, I will take that any day of the week. Someone who had a dud though, and a shocker, was Zach Bailey. So three behinds, no goals, 10 kicks, three handballs, and can only muster up 42 GDS points, which is his lowest score for the season. So if I'm him, yeah. I forget the game, both personally and how his team went, and, yeah, forget that it ever happened. Yeah, absolutely. Just move on, on to the next one, eh? Yeah, which I'm trying to do on a personal note with Liverpool, but it's a lot <laughs> easier said than done. Game nine, like I said, this is also... A real shock, and it was Collingwood not only just beating Frio, but doing it quite convincingly. Sean Darcy managed to get himself have a day out. No Grundy, like we said before, so he was up against no one and had 145 GDS points. And he's given Isaac Quainor 61 as his dud. But yeah, surprising not to have any Collingwood people there in the studs because, like I said, I thought they were terrific, and I thought Frio were really disappointing. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Yeah, those two last games, I don't think anyone could have predicted those two right because <laughs> that was outstanding from both teams. And what we're going to roll on to, the final thing here, we have our stud leaderboard. And as you can see there, Tom, there's been no changes at the top, but we've had four new people join the second line of three points. And that's Darcy wow. Parrish, Callum Mills, Took Miller, and Dan Houston have all earned themselves their third stud of the, the season. They're all coming for keys. But, yeah, who would you think? If you had to pick one of those guys on the bottom row to jump up next week and you had to put your money on one, who would you go for? Oh, man. My heart tells me Andrew Brayshaw, but my eye patch for the Swans tells me Callum Mills. So take it or leave, take it out you want. Um, yeah, one of those two. I like that. I like that a lot. And on the dud leaderboard, now this was actually meant to be updated last week, but we hadn't got your, we hadn't got everyone's tips in in time. But Cam Rayner was actually meant to be on four duds, so he's joined Jack Zebel up on the four points. So yeah, maybe it was just my hatred for for Zebel's year this year that maybe made me just want to put Zebel up there by himself. But yeah, actually, there's two at the top with Wingard below. So apologies for Cam Rayner for missing you out and putting you on the top of our dud leaderboard last week. I don't know if he wants an apology for that. Mate. And uh, it's been stiff for him, you know. I don't think he's been terrible, but it's just the expectation we have for Cam Rayner and it's such a high-octane team in the Brisbane Lions. Like, there's so much opportunity there to score and be productive. It just isn't happening yet. Hey, and if you made it this far in the video, please consider giving it a like. Guys, all of our links are down below in the description, our socials, our Discord. If you want to submit a pack in the week and potentially win a free pack in our next show, that's the place to do it, and we'll be in touch with you there. But let's get into our rolling GDS team. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Quickly, though, you talked about Discord. We had our third legend card pop up. On the thing, uh, we've only had three pop up in circulation so far, so I'm not going to give any spoilers. Jump over to Discord and find out who it is. Um, I know the person was very excited when they Could saw be that huge. red glowing. I'm pretty sure they are. Uh, they filmed it as well, so I'm waiting to see that video go up somewhere at some point. So love that. But rolling all GDS team. We've had a couple of changes this week, but none in the ruck, so no surprises there. Gorn's still holding that one down, but. So let's start at the in the back line. Defenders, Jordan Dawson. We said he had a big game, even though I didn't have him as the stud of the game because Max King was kicking six goals. But Jordan Dawson, Jordan Dawson is now into the six, and Alex Witherden has dropped out. 
So we we spoke so highly about Dawson at the start of the year. So I'm, for one, I'm really happy to see him jump in there. Shame for Witherden because he has been playing some really good footy, but it has just been falling off over the last couple of weeks. In the mids, your boy, Clayton Oliver, has skyrocketed up to third place. Dunkley drops to the bench, and believe it or not, it is Rory Laird who drops out of the team completely, which is a bit of a surprise because he just got himself in there and now he's going straight back out. Yeah, and he and was red fi- hot as well, Laird. That's t- tough, t- tough. Yeah, and someone else who finds himself in the twos this week is Jordan Degoe. He's fallen out of that forward line, and my boy, Jack Zach Butters. Jeez, I cannot speak today. My Big apologies, everyone, for putting up with me. Zach Butters has jumped onto the bench spot. Love to see it. I know we're huge on him. He's had a bit of an up and down year, but still crazy to think that he's in the top six forwards at the moment. Top seven, I should say. Well, mate, he's having the same season as the person he replaced. Up and down is the perfect way to describe it. I think I'm about to be dropped too for Kerm as well if I can't get my words out properly. So I'm just <laughs> gonna I'm I'm just gonna try not to speak for the rest of the show. That'll be difficult, but we're gonna move on to the final segment: buy, sell, hold. We've got Kerms up on the screen here. Do you want to talk through them? Because I'm I'm just gonna go I'm on mute here. Yeah, absolutely, mate. He's buying Stephen Cornelio right now, um, and he's got his comment there. Good time to buy. Uh, JWS, we spoke about before, the coaching change coming in. You know, um, They're really hoping they can turn things around there. This could be a perfect buy low opportunity and to sort of stack up your team. There for the sell is Tom Lynch. Now, don't mind the decision. Don't love it though. As I mentioned before, I'm a huge buy low, sell high type of fantasy player. Um, I don't want to be selling Tom Lynch after the week he had this week. I'd be looking for an easier matchup where he kicks a bag and then trying to sell. But can also reason with it because people maybe haven't forgotten about the two weeks he had prior and will still be willing to pay quite a premium. And hold, he's got his boy, Matty Rowell, in there. Um, you know, he's the type of up-and-down player, very similar to the players we just discussed in the All-GDS team. Uh, he's had some fantastic weeks this year. He's also gone missing a little bit as well. So don't mind that option from him. And going and backing in his sons, love that. I'll take myself off mute and I'll add something because I've, I've seen a few Matty Rao games and he actually has been playing pretty well. Yeah. Um, despite not getting some big numbers, I think he's doing some really selfless things. Does help the team a lot. Um, but yeah, we'd just love to see him win a bit more of the footy himself because I think yeah he's talented enough to do it. We've seen that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think that's the perfect way to describe it: impact player rather than big numbers and production. What about your buy sell hold? Who have you got? Yeah, man, I'd love to buy Nick Martin. And I talk about, you know, buy low, sell high. Nick Martin hasn't been playing amazing, but we've seen the potential. We know what he can do. He's so young, and you've got to put your dynasty cap on here. He could be a stud for the next upcoming years, and if you can secure a player like Nick Martin now, that's a no-brainer for me. We'll go through some of the stats from his season. He's averaging 12 kicks a game, 9 handballs, nearly 6 marks, and 1.2 goals with a single tackle. These are great signs early, if you ask me. And look, the Bombers haven't been the best team. They've been struggling, but he has been the shining light for them. And you're gonna, you have to think that's going to continue as the years go on. So I, I'm buying Nick Martin, buying all of his stock up right now. I love it. I love it. Sell. Now, I've got a little question here. Is it time to sell Tom Mitchell? We spoke about sell high, buy low. Tom Mitchell has come off his best fantasy game uh, this week. He was huge in the win for Hawthorne. We discussed it before against the Brisbane Lions. He had an awesome game. But, um, you know, I'm worried I might be pulling the trigger a little bit too early on this. So if you want to reason and think maybe hold him for a week or two more, get that value even higher, I reason with that. But I think it's time to get rid of him. I haven't Can I say completely? Go for it, mate. S- sell him, but go back in time and sell him weeks ago. Oh, he's been, I've been off him for so long. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if absolutely. You've got, if you've still got him, I reckon, just get rid of him. Sunk cost at this point. For sure. But now's the time, you know. Coming off his best game of the year, people might start believing in Tom Mitchell again, be willing to pay that little bit more. Uh, you capitalize on that for me as a fantasy manager. So personally, I'm off Tom Mitchell Island. So is Callum about six weeks ago. So uh, do what you want with that. But my hold, it's um, Patrick Dangerfield, and let's go to this concept again. Um, he's coming off his worst fantasy game. Obviously, had sixty percent time on ground, which isn't great, 
But in that time on ground, he wasn't very good either. Uh, there wasn't really great production from him. And I just, you know, you've got to think, has Patrick Dangerfield ever warranted fantasy owners to panic sell him? I don't think so. I feel like he's earned the respect of people. He's so good at football. We've seen it for so many years. And I want to be selling someone like Patrick Dangerfield, not now, but in a couple of weeks when he finds some form. Uh, we'll see if he's going to play this upcoming week, but you know he's going to have some cracker games in there as it heads towards the later end of the season. And that's when I'll be looking to sell a player like Patrick Dangerfield and uh, picking up you know, a nicer dynasty option. We know that Dangerfield is coming towards that end of his career. You can't be a star midfield forever, unfortunately. I certainly wish he could because I would love to watch him forever, but it is what it is. Hold on to Patrick Dangerfield, sell him in a couple of weeks. We'll come back to that one. Interesting. It has been confirmed he'll miss a couple of weeks, so he will be out for a little bit. But yeah, when he comes back, potentially after the buys, we'll see. The rest might be good for him. I would have sold Mitchell and sold Dangerfield to fund the purchases of Nick Martin. But hey, that's why we love GDS, because we can all do our own thing and back ourselves. Yeah. My final buy, sell, hold, though, feel free to critique mine like I've just critiqued yours. Buying who I've got there, I've got Will Brody. This guy is 23 and he's not going away. And I loved what you said before about Brayshaw and Oliver, because if one doesn't get you, the other one will. And that's because it's almost impossible to tag two midfielders at the same time. And I think stacking him and Brayshaw for the long time is going to be the thing to do. He's been on the buy list before. I'm sure I've had him here, but it's good reason I've put him up here again. He's averaging over 100 points still. It's his breakout year. He's only going to get better and eat more as Frio get better. So, yeah, definitely go out and buy all the Will Brodies you can. Yeah, I love that pick, mate. Now, on the sell, I've got Josh P. Kennedy, your boy from Sydney. He had a bit of a chaotic few minutes uh, the other night where he both, I think, got reported and did his hamstring or did something at the same time. But it's, I think it was hamstring. Or it looks like he's going to be out for a fair bit of time now, potentially up to 12 weeks, I think I saw. So that could run him out for the rest of the season because yeah. I wouldn't want to be bringing him in just late before finals if you guys do get there. But it's such a shame to think that we're never going to see the best of this guy again. And even before that, he was dropped early in the year and used as a sub for his form. So coming out of contract at the end of the year, it's a little bit of a gamble with GDS here where you could go out and you could take the, the approach that he's never coming back. He's not going to be the player he is. Sell the card, forget the name Josh Kennedy. Or you could take the approach that the value is never going to get lower than it is right now. Do you pick up some Josh Kennedy cards if you can? And then you'll be able to sell them for a little bit in the future if he does come back. So Yeah, man. I, I honestly think his price couldn't be worse right now. I read today it was going to be anywhere between 8 to 10 weeks uh, sitting on the sideline with that hamstring injury. You're too right there. So um, yeah. I don't think his stock gets any lower. So um, I don't know if I completely agree with that one, mate. But hey, that's how the game goes. You've got to make these tough calls. Well, one hopefully you do agree with is my hold. And I've got Zach Bailey. So I said before, had a bit of a dud game, and he isn't having the season a lot of us thought he would. But at 22, he's still a jet for the Lions. And I've got a bold burning prediction here, and it's despite everything that's happening at the moment, I still think Zach Bailey has the potential to be the highest scoring forward in GDS one year. He's sensational. He can kick goals, kick three or four, and win you a game. But he also goes into the midfield and gets valuable minutes in there. So if the Lions continue to be relevant through his sort of through his mid twenties and late twenties, I can really see him becoming an awesome, awesome dynasty prospect. So you could have easily put him in the buy here, but you can't. Up, maybe you could after the week he had. Maybe a few people are panic selling. But yeah, definitely hold on to your Zach Bailey's and don't think about selling them if that is you. Yeah, couldn't agree with this call more. Um, I'd be looking at buying him rather than selling right now for sure. And if you definitely, if you have a card of his or you currently own him, you need to be holding on. As I completely agree with what you said, he has the potential and the talent to become that sort of player. We just need to see it happen with more opportunity as time goes on. Yeah, absolutely. Tom, that's going to wrap us up for another episode of the Footy Game Day Squad show. Thank you very much for going through that with me. And thank you, everyone who's listened so far. If you have made it this far, do think about giving us a like and a subscribe. And hey, shout us out and give us a shout. Not shout us out. Don't do that. Give us a comment. You Let us have a chat to us in Discord. We'd love to have a chat to you guys about your teams and what you're doing and how your fantasy team's going because I'm sure there's a few things you probably disagree with. We've been a bit 
bit controversial there with some of our takes at the end. We want to let you know. We want you guys to let us know what you think. And I think for the best of everyone, I'm just going to stop talking today. The weekend's clearly gotten to me. Is there anything else you want to say, Tom, before we go? No, mate. We'll see you at the next show. Peace out, guys. Thank you.